Welcome to the winter sports season premiere of this week in Wyoming Cowboys Athletics here in wyomingathletics.org and ESPN Media powered by Sodom Sports. I'm Jason Griefer. We're happy to welcome back Wyoming Assistant Athletic Director Jeff King. Uh, Jeff, good to talk to you once again. Uh, let, let's, let me, let me uh, kind of get the feel for how things are in the broad perspective around your athletics programs here. Have you and Jan kind of found yourselves getting a better handle in navigating the, the COVID protocols and things that we're in right now? Or, or are you still trying to work more on a day-to-day -day basis? I, I think we still do it on a day-to-day -day basis just because you never know when changes are going to come. Um, but we've definitely, we definitely feel comfortable about, you know, the protocols that are in place. Mm -hmm. um, we like how we came out of the fall season, being able to complete, you know, pretty much everything that was given to us at least, you yeah. know, when it came to the fall seasons. Um, and we, we've had some, you know, coaches help us out. Our athletic trainers are doing a fantastic job helping us out with all the COVID protocols and everything. And the students are really starting to buy in. I think once we've gotten through the holiday season, mm -hmm. gotten to the new year, realize, you know, we only have just over, you know, really two months basically left in this winter season. Yeah. And um, we, we got to really button down and make sure we're doing everything right to keep the season afloat. Let's start talking about some of your teams here and let's start with boys basketball and obviously a very interesting season this year coming off of how things have gone so swimmingly the last couple of years this year it's been a little more challenging you know lost the team dropped the first three games of the year they've sent they've bounced back uh, to win their last two and they're going to take on Hughes tonight Tuesday night we're actually going to cover that game on watch HS sports TV I'm glad to be out glad to be back out there but they also had a long layoff in between the Northwest game and then the game against Summit this past uh, Friday there so they've had some time to kind of work thing work throughout there and uh, one of the things I've been interested to see is how they've worked to try and get more offense going because that's been a struggle this season through five games it's a small sample size but you know, look at the way things gone the season high point total has been 53 points that's a lot lower than what you've been used to uh, as, over the last number of years there so what have the coaches been working on during that layoff and leading up into tonight's game against Hughes to try to get some more offense uh, on the board you know we, we've been doing a lot of preparation um it, like you mentioned with all those layoffs it was kind of tough bringing the whole team together we had a couple different you know um setbacks there and but it, watching a ton of film um making up practices and stuff that we missed by you know a, a little bit of guys you know guys getting on the court on their own um putting in those extra workouts to make sure that we know, hey, look, we're only five games into the season. We're going to take it one game at a time. You know, I spoke with Isaiah Walker, um, you know, and that's what he says. We're taking it one game at a time. Step number five was complete when we beat Summit. You know, we started off with three really tough games mm -hmm. uh, out of GCL schools that, you know, no normally um, CHL schools don't, don't schedule a lot of GCL schools to start off the season. But yeah. You know, when I talked with Coach Rooks about that and we got them on this on the books, we thought, well, later on when it comes time, when it, you know, tournament time, those games are really going to pay off for us playing mm -hmm. those really tough schools. And I think we're going to see a ramp up of offense here. The guys are ready to start scoring, putting more points up on the board. And they're going to take on a very athletic Hughes team uh, on watchhsports.tv at, at 7.30. Let's move over and talk about the girls. Just covered their game against Madeira on Monday night. Got the win there. They're now 3-0. Uh, in league play and doing it with defense. I, I almost wonder if they've just studied Coach Hancock and the football team and learned how to lock teams down because through three league games, they've only given up 81 points. And that's pretty darn good uh, through three games. And two young ladies I want to give special recognition to who I thought were very impressive in the win were uh, Meredith Bornholt, who, who gets a lot of attention right now. But I thought Elise Cup came off the bench in that game and gave you guys some big minutes down on the block. You know, you can't teach height and she has it. You know, she's looks like in that six foot two, six foot three range, look like she could probably bo box you out down on the block there, but uh, came in and gave your team a, a really big boost. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Meredith, um, her, her leadership and everything throughout the season so far and coming in clutch last night, making some really big shots. And then obviously, you know, like you, like you said, Elise, um, being really tough down low, you know, Jermaine Isaac's getting this team ready and kind of turning around from the kind of season that we had last year, starting out 3-0 and now in the CHL, atop of the standings there. We're very happy about that and like where this program's going. That was a tough win, like you said. Um, you know, Vanessa Rosander also had some really tough moments last mm -hmm. night. Um, you know, so she, sh she shined in that win. And uh, we take them on again this weekend against Madeira. So um, yeah, it's a quick turnaround for that. But that's what it's going to be like for the rest of this winter season. So um, I, we look forward to keeping them tough, 
like you said, you know, pounding down on, on defense and um, hopefully being able to start putting more points on the board as well. I enjoyed seeing Coach Isaac in person for the first time uh, with my own eyes and seeing and, and I'm guessing decaf is not in his regimen or maybe he does, maybe he doesn't need it. I don't know. But the guy is relentless all over the place. And it, to me, it looks like that kind of fed into how your team plays, especially defensively, because it, it took a long time for Madeira to try to manufacture some kind of offense after a couple of early threes. Does his energy kind of become infectious when on the floor like that? Absolutely. That's one of the reasons why, you know, he's here and we're so excited about him for this girl's program. Like you said, I mean, yeah, he, he's probably a, a walking cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if he needs it. His energy is just always so good. And his whole staff with Coach Oldham, Coach Walker, um, the girls are really, really buying into his type of philosophies. Their practices are extremely high paced. Um, and they know that in order to play for him and, and succeed on him, they got to play with that toughness you know, that high energy and he loves it and they feed off of it. Would he break a Fitbit if he wore it on the sideline? <laughs> you know what? I, th I think he might. I think I I'd, I'd be interested to see how many steps and everything that he puts in and, and heck probably, probably climbs a couple uh, flights of stairs yeah. by jumping up and down too. I, I can just imagine him wearing one and eventually looking down at his wrist and it's saying, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, but, it, yeah. but it's a lot, it's a lot of fun to see. And it's, it's, Absolutely. it's obviously it's, it's bleeding over onto the floor and it's a three and zero start and not to shake a stick at, you know, especially given, you know, going forward, we don't know how many league games we're going to get in. Hopefully it's the full league schedule, but you don't know pile right. up the wins while you, you're available, well, they're available to you. Uh, let's move on. Let's move in uh, to the pool. Let's talk about your talk about swim and dive. And uh, let's start, start with the swim teams first, both of them. And uh, looking at the uh, CHL leaderboards and a lot of low times across different distances. And the thing that's getting me, the thing got caught my eye in evaluating that you got a, two very young teams that you're doing this with freshmen, sophomores, some juniors, yeah, you've got a few seniors in there, but a lot of youth right now that's coming in and producing early on and, and doing very well. Uh, how, how has coach Elliott been able to manage that and manufacture results out of youngsters who are coming in and maybe just maybe seeing their, first varsity experience in expanded time. Yeah, I mean, he, he's really grown a program where a lot of these youngsters are coming up and they're performing like they've been in the pool at the high school level for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, and, and we have a great junior high program as well that kind of feeds into that. And I think we're really excited about, you know, where we're at from the freshman and, and, and the sophomore standpoint. Obviously, like you mentioned, the juniors and the seniors as well. We're, we're really impressed with how the swimmers have kind of just handled the adversity of this season as well with all the pr different protocols. You know, they don't have any spectators at their meets. They don't have anything like that to, you know, when they're in the pool, hearing the, hearing the fans and all that type of stuff. So what Coach Elliott's been able to do and then Coach um, – Karn on from the from the diving side as well to keep them motivated and keep them working hard um it, it's really been impressive we're excited to see where they're going to go down the stretch let's move on to the bowling lanes and start with the boys first this has been an, kind of an interesting year for, for for the boys team kind of a almost a Jekyll and Hyde so to speak and what I mean by that is you, you look at their record right now they're three and one outside of the CHL but winless inside the CHL. They're 0-5 in the league. And, and, and you've got some good teams in there. You know, Redding's off to a nice start. Deer Park, Minitown, they're just getting going. But, you know, they're usually pretty solid programs as well. And look at some of your numbers. You've got, you know, three bowlers have had, you know, high games in the low 200s. So, you I mean, the potential is there. But ahead of uh, ahead of the, the match against Deer Park coming up here, again, Deer Park's in first place right now. Granted, they've only played one match in the league. But nevertheless, they're in first right now. How have they gone about trying to consistently get those results in match in and match out. I have to imagine also that's affected by their, their ability, or maybe it's sometimes lack thereof to train because the, the lanes sometimes are just not available to them. Yeah. It's funny that you just said the word consistency, because that was exactly what I was going to say is they're trying <laughs> to build on more consistent play, especially in league matches. And, you know, we have had to kind of switch around. We had to find open lanes to go practice in, go play in. So They've really dealt with that adversity also with, you know, like all, all the sports teams trying to make sure that we have facilities that they can continue to train at. Yeah. And Coach Wood is doing a good job, you know, making sure that, look, let's control what we can control. At the end of the day, we're going to, you know, bowl where we can. Um, I mean, heck, I wish I had some scores in the low 200s when I went out bowling. I definitely you're, do you're, not. You're telling me. <laughs> yeah, you know, so um, consistency. I think like we're going to try to build on that. Um, and and we, we've got some more matches scheduled that we're really excited about. So we'll see. You know, hopefully that out-of-conference play can kind of start to trickle over into the CHL play. 
Let's talk about the girls. And uh, in, in, in years past, when, when, when I would talk to Jan, it was kind of a more, the girls bowling was kind of an emerging program, program that was being built, being developed. And now here we are turning the page in 2021. And now we're starting to see some of the results of that building and, and work pay off. You know, they're, they're six and two overall, two and two in the league. So they're off to, they're off to good starts uh, all the way around. How rewarding is it for you and your staff, the coaches and the bowlers themselves to see that the struggles they've gone through in building this program are starting to turn and their hard work is paying off. And now they're starting to get to get the wins to show for it. It's fantastic. You know, I mean, we're definitely happy where they're at. They're right in the middle of the pack of the CHL. So we can still make a push there for that. And, you know, six and two out of, out of conference, I mean, total, you know, we're, we're happy about that. Same thing with on the boys size. They've dealt with a lot of adversity, trying to find the lanes of practice time and all that. So, you know, we're, we're super proud of what coach Wood has done with them developing that program. And I think it's only going to get better. And uh, still a long way to go in the season. And Taylor's four and one league. Redding's just getting started there. So uh, it's seemingly a chance for uh, really anybody to go up and grab that crown because you don't know how many matches you're going to have there as well. Similar to girls basketball. Let's pile up the wins while we while we have the ability uh, to do it. Uh, as we're moving on here on the show, let's move on to the wrestling mat. And uh, this is an interesting one for me. I've looked at this wrestling season as one that I didn't I'm not sure how this season's going to be pulled off and and the reason why I say it is because you can't social distance when you're on the mat you can't air wrestle you can't you you know you you can do that and you can try to train in smaller pods in practice and whatnot but when it comes to a wrestling meet you got to be in there right against somebody and you know it, it's interesting that knowing that you know your team has just it, it, it's it seemingly hasn't skipped a beat you know this past weekend they win the valley view invitational eight individual champions one runner up one sixth place finish i mean it seems like it hasn't really mattered to them how they've had to negotiate the outside stuff they lock in and they focus so uh two two questions two-part question for you number one how much did each of these wrestlers personally intimidate you <laughs> and number two, what kind of message does that send when they can go up to Valley View and basically clean house there? And what message does that send going forward? Oh, uh, well, to answer your first question, all of them. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the re wrestlers, I always tell everybody, you don't mess with the wrestlers. You just don't. And they, they've taken this, um, all the different protocols and everything, starting from, you know, Coach Lyons, just making sure that we're really focused. And he's kind of looked at the schedule because wrestling, finding a wrestling schedule this year has been pretty challenging and making sure that they have matches. Sure. And he's basically, he's basically like, look, find some matches. We're going to take our kids there. We're going to wrestle. And mm -hmm. they, they've handled practice so well. I always say, you know, if, if people think that wearing a mask is tough, go watch Coach Lyons because he keeps it on the whole time and he's wrestling people in, 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 in practice. And I can't imagine doing a wrestling match with a mask on. So, um, <laughs> You know, so he, he's doing such a good job making sure that they stay in tune to all that and really just stay focused on the prize with wrestling, knowing that we have a really good shot um, moving forward to, to make some noise throughout the state and, you know, and, and hopefully have some some more crown champs. And the Valley View Invitational, that was a great message. Um, we showed that we were ready to anybody. Um, we have a great match coming up here tomorrow with um, – Wilmington and Oak Hills so that's going to be a tough one and then we go to Batavia now on Saturday with them and Be Bethel Tate so we're trying to find anybody to wrestle us and um, we're up for whatever challenge brings that comes to us so the message being to any folks out there who are watching or listening to this podcast if, if you've got a wrestling team and you want to get some work in uh, contact Jeff King and, and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get the hook up there um what with the wrestling team here just let, real quickly here again how many of those young men when they walk through the school are on a yes sir no sir basis i mean they they all are they're great kids, <laughs> you know <laughs> and, i mean they, they wrestling when you watch a practice wrestling practice watch them work out the, you, you it's very hard to find athletes that work harder than they do and they, they all have you know their individual goals but more importantly their team goals to continue to put wyoming wrestling on the map and grow that program and we're, we're so proud of what they're doing and we're really excited where they're going and I want folks to understand where this is coming from with you, because I've seen you train some football players before uh, at the high school. You, you, you know, you went through, you played college football yourself and whatnot. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you're, you're no joke when it comes to a trainer. I, I've seen that up close and personal. So for, for, for you to give that compliment to these wrestlers, folks outside of Wyoming that are listening, take it seriously. This guy knows what he's talking about. These are some very talented 
uh, wrestlers indeed across multiple weight classes, which is even better is you have the depth right. across the across the board where no matter what weight class you have, you're right now, at least same way, at least in Valley View, you're going to probably walk away with a, an individual champion there. So uh, really good stuff from the wrestling team. But lastly, before we uh, before we let you go here today on the season premiere of the uh, Winter Sports Podcast, I want to kind of circle back to what we talked about at the beginning of of the program and how you and and Jan Wilking and the rest of your staff have been able to maybe get a better feel for how to navigate the pandemic. Obviously, nobody has all the right answers. We were in unprecedented times. I'm wondering how the outside community has been for you now that we're into this. I understand and I know that in the fall season for everybody, it was a lot of frustration because a lot of stuff we didn't understand and we didn't know. And a lot of things were going on a day by day basis, sometimes an hour by hour basis. Things could change on a dime. You, you know that better than I do. How has the community been towards you, Jan, and most importantly, the student athletes now that we're into this winter season? I mean, I couldn't be happier with the response that we've gotten. You know, we, we have, it's tough because obviously we have to restrict, um, you know, attendance and not everyone can come to the games. Everyone has to wear a mask, follow all the protocols. And our community has been so great making sure that they follow everything that we put in place um, and because they know that it's for the greater good of the student athletes so that we're actually continuing continuing on with this season. So we're so thankful of the support that we've gotten from the community and, you know, the understanding, the patience, um, you, you know, all the troubles with the new ticketing systems online and everything like that. It's been really great to see the community come together. Um, we work with some really great families, great student athletes that have all come together and helped us through this. And it's one of the reasons why we're sitting here today talking about still competing. Yeah. And so we, we, you know, we're very happy and couldn't be more thankful. Lastly, before I let you go here, I want to kind of get your thoughts. And I think we did a little of this back in the fall on, on your boss, Jan Wilking, and, and the way she's handled things. A lot of people who, for people who don't know, she's one of the best athletic directors in the state of Ohio. And, and I'm not saying it because I'm here on wyomingathletics.org talking to you. Uh, she has a lot of respect around the state. How have you seen her develop and grow during this time, during the pandemic? And how has that, made, how has that helped you become a better assistant AD? It makes me want to um, do better every single day because I have to be able to continually come in and, and try and fill her shoes, which let me tell you something right now is a very tall task to try to do. Um, you know, I'm up for the challenge, but she makes me better every single day. She's always available for any calls, any questions that I have, including from the president, from the um, parents, from the coaches, from the student athletes. Um, it's making my job more enjo enjoyable. And, you know, it, it's it's something where hopefully I can get to that point um, of the reputation that she's, you know, garnered. Cause like you said, one of the best, if not, you know, for our money, the best in the state of Ohio. And it's one of the reasons why our program is where it is. And I think most importantly, she does all, just about all of it, if not all of it with a smile on her face. And that is not an easy thing to pull off in, in the times we're in uh, for sure. Uh, Jeff, certainly appreciate you providing us some of your time here today on the podcast and uh, certainly look forward to talking more about the winter sports season in depth as we go forward. Awesome. Jason, great seeing you again. Looking forward to it. And uh, we'll see you tonight for a great basketball game. We will be there. Watch HSports.TV, Wyoming, hosting Hughes, 730 tip for the boys there tonight. That is assistant athletic director Jeff King joining us for the winter sports season premiere of this week in Wyoming Cowboys Athletics here in wyomingathletics.org and ESP Media powered by Sidearm Sports.